in the previous video we analyzed a little bit on pumps, type of pumps, the actual ones and the positive displacement. And finally we are in the type of pumps that we will be using most of the times, which are centrifugal pumps. And as you can see, sorry, there's a the inlet is right here. Blue means low pressure, red means high pressure. So you start you have your fluid and the impeller starts moving and as the fluid goes through the wall you can see that it starts blue, then bluish, green, yellow and eventually red red means high pressure and once it is high pressurized it goes out with high pressure so that's the logic between, uh, behind that this is the same just side view, this is front view the eye is where the suction goes so you have your pipe goes here, it starts moving away, 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 until it is high pressurized and now it's free to go. And I got you a video guys, so you could understand how this works. So, let me show you. So you got centrifugal force because of the movement, hopefully you know that uh, on physics, when you move objects you have centrifugal force. The fluid goes through the eye, they start going outside, and you can see there's an increase in energy. That's the eye that I was telling you about. And the pressure, normally this is very low pressure, and the outside is high pressure. So you can see here, these guys are... Wait, wait. These guys are having this... Maybe this is a vessel. They have a water here, and they're moving it here. They have it in the eye, and through the eye goes outside. So as you can see, there are plenty of ways to go through the pump and actually they will go to this only this charge line and then will be high pressurized so that's actually how a pump works let me show you another example this is mainly on how is it built this is the discharge line the eye is the suction line the charge line you need of course to have a motor here so this will be moving and we'll be rotating, you need to add some packagings because of course you want to avoid leakage you need to seal it and yeah essentially that's how a centrifugal pump is installed now you're ready to add your suction line here you will start moving it moving, moving, moving. we'll pressurize and eventually go through the discharge line and discharge it with high pressure so good now let's check out some important parts on the centrifugal pump. As you can see, I already told you this is the charge line and this is the eye, which is typically a suction line. You need to have the shaft, which is the thing with, which will be moving the impeller. The impeller is the that shaped, uh, let's say, uh, paddle that will be moving the fluid. The casing is, well, in general, all this stuff the gray stuff you see you need some bearings for the motor and all that stuff but essentially what we care is discharge, suction, impeller and the shaft so let me show you the super basic notion on pump, part, pump parts uh, the impeller is the most important part guys because that's what actually moves and starts moving the fluid and increases the pressure you need to know that the shaft is that thing that is connected between the motor and the impeller so without a shaft you wouldn't be able to move the impeller house casing, well of course you need to have a very beautiful safe way to house all this equipment the motor is key to the development of the work you know that if you want to add some work you need a motor to generate energy, mechanical energy so the mechanical energy comes from the electricity you have the motor, you add electricity motor will rotate it will rotate the the shaft right here, when you rotate the shaft you have mechanical energy right there suction line, very important, goes directly through the impeller the charge line goes away so the motor is a very important part right, uh, right here so you have the actual pump but eventually you need to connect it via a shaft to a motor so these things right here it's a motor 
this is another motor. Normally, well, depends on the industry, but the normal color you use for motors are light blue or blue. These little things is for heating or taking away the heat. Motors, as you know, have an efficiency as well. So all that that not, does not transform into work goes through heat, so you need to cool this. So get access to plenty of problems, go to the practice section right here and you will be able to see that I have plenty of problems, actually I got almost 140 problems about friction, pumps, uh, mechanical learning equation, Reynolds number, pressure drop, all relevant to mechanical energy is here. Empty and tank to Richelli's law, Bernoulli's law and so on. So go and register and you will have access to plenty of problems right here. This is in order for the air to pass through here and we'll cool it and take away the heat. So you can see there's the suction line, the discharge line and in this case well it's a little bit more fancy the suction line goes through here and eventually goes through the eye and the discharge line is here. More on pumps part, well, recall this charge and here is the inlet. Pump casing is everything that it's outside. The impeller is right here. Whereas do you need to know the suction? It goes directly normally to the impeller. Impeller I is this little center of the impeller guys. It's very important because we're going to make a small analysis on the pressure exerted in the impeller eye. And uh, well, there are many other little details, for example, packaging, uh, the vane, what else, impeller you already know, the charge nozzle you know it, the shaft you know it already, impeller you know it, eye of the impeller you know it already, casing or housing you know it, actually you know everything right here. So you should know by now the most basic parts of a pump, so next time you go to the industry, at least you know, where is it? how or why pumps are like this. Why do you always need a motor behind the pump? So a little bit more on construction. This is the suction line. Imagine this is the pipe. You need to connect it through the pump. So this is very important guys. The diameter of the suction line must be equal to that of the pipe. If it's not equal to that of the pipe, you will need to add a reducer or expander in order to fit the pump. The discharge pipe, this will be also here, this is the huge pipe, the discharge pipe must be of the same diameter as the discharge here in the pump, so be sure just to consider that when you make your calculations. The shaft goes here, the packaging go here, impeller, right now you cannot see it but it's right here, it starts moving. The casing is just, of course, for safety and because you need to have a very good maintenance on the impeller. And of course, if you wouldn't have impeller uh, housing, you will have all the water going out. A little bit more. This is a transversal view. So, suction line, impeller starts moving, discharge line. But how does the impeller move? Well, you need the shaft right here. How does the shaft move? You need a motor, actually right here which of course will have all oil and bearings but this is more into the mechanical part I'm going to check out that we are more interested in this part right here I like this picture because they actually separate each of the uh, let's say pieces you have this this part right here very important impeller that tell you how it rotates eventually you need to close it and this is all the housing so actually all these pieces you could say is housing or casing and finally let me show you this this is a very typical example on how you could see the impeller in a pipe this is of course uh, one fourth free you can see 25 percent of the pump uh, this is the suction discharge line shaft impeller and of course you're going to have bearings and ceilings and all that stuff and the housing or casing so that was all the important parts on the centrifugal pump in the next video we're going to check about the performance of the same pump this was a free preview you want to get 
full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you are for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.